do now is to strip a piece of wire down and then solder it to a three and a half millimeter jack so just like this there's the jack and there's the wire soldered into it and when I unscrew it you can see the soldering in there okay so what we want to do now is just show this step by step so I think the best type of wire to use is one of these ones that has the all the little bits of copper inside in the one wire they're probably a little bit easier to work with so the first thing to do is to strip the insulation off the wire so if it's cut like this take your wire strippers if you don't have wire strippers just be gentle with the Stanley knife and then just find the right notch here and go about this much depth. Sorry. Okay. And, and just pull. And then you get a nice clean cut there. And these are the wires we want to work with now for our soldering. The next step is to take a three and a half millimeter mono plug. Okay, it doesn't have to be mono, but the mono just makes the connections a little bit easier to work with. So if you just take one of these, they're quite cheap to buy. I got, for example, I bought 10 of them for 2 euro on eBay. So just unscrew like this, and you have the two connectors. We will be soldering our piece of copper wire to this smaller one here. So, so take the 3.5mm plug and the piece of stripped wire that you have. If you just slightly fray out the ends of the wire here, now you might need to pluck up the um, small connector here on the bottom just to lip it up a little tiny bit and just take your wire in here and try and very gently screw it in through the hole like this okay once you can get a kind of a, a solid link there such that it doesn't need solder to be held in place so here's the three and a half millimeter jack and the stripped wire just held together with two helping hands from the soldering iron stand. The next thing we'll do is just heat up the soldering iron and then just place the solder over here and just be quite gentle with it and rate it. just let it soak into the wire. So now we solder it in. This bit's very delicate and I'm not particularly good at soldering so let's see. And it, it should be soaking it up now. Okay. And just to be sure, make sure we get it all. What you do, just as a final check to make sure that your soldering is okay and ready to go, I think the best thing to do is just get a small voltmeter, set it onto one of the low settings there for resistance, and then just collect connect either end of one of them to the tip of the plug and then to the other end of your bare wire the other one if the resistance goes down to zero which it hopefully does yeah well then you've got a good solder. so we have our jack connected to the wire here it is still a little bit loose so what I'm gonna do is just fill up this kind of a gap here in the connector with some hot glue so if you just take your hot glue gun like this and just dab a small piece into the gap here it'll just shore things up. Also the glue when it solidifies or any time is not electrically conductive so it shouldn't harm anything else. Okay, you can um, cut off any excess afterwards. And that should do the job. So you can see it here that the um, solder has set, or sorry, that the hot glue has set. It's this kind of small translucent kind of block underneath the copper wire there, and that's set. So the next thing is just to slip on the jacket that came with the, the plug. So just slip it on like this, one end of the wire through gets caught sometimes in the middle. Okay, bring it all the way down to the bottom and then just 
snug it over and screw it on. You might have a small bit of resistance because the hot glue isn't perfectly done. So here we have the kind of finished plug soldered onto our wire. Now you'll still notice the end of it is still a bit loose down here. So another kind of an optional step just to shore things up a little bit. And in case, as you can see here, I did a poor attempt at stripping the wire. Um, we can just put a small bit of heat shrink wire over it. It's completely optional, but just to shore things up, I think we'll do it. So after I did the heat shrinking, I couldn't show it on camera because the burner would have to be too close to the camera. I didn't like that. So I have my plug wrapped around with heat shrink, two wraps actually, and then it got a bit smaller, and then a wrap around the wire itself. So now we have a fairly solid electrical connection from this bit across the wire over to here. The next thing now to do is just to solder this end onto what is actually the long wire antenna itself, and then we're almost there. So this is just a spool of actually speaker wire. It was bought in one of those shops to everything in the shop for two euros so it's quite cheap stuff you'll see there's actually two strands of wire here one silver and one copper one it's for like i said speaker wire all we're interested in just one of the strands so what i'll do is i'll split these two strands apart i don't really care about the silver one it can just sit there and then i want to solder this copper wire onto the end of the one here okay so i'm just going to solder this onto this and we're done so in the final set, all we do is just plug the long wire aerial into our shortwave radio. So here's my shortwave radio. I have tuned it into 462, or sorry, 4625 kilohertz shortwave SSB narrow bandwidth. So the station you can hear in the background there should be the buzzer. So let's listen. Okay, the stational signal is pretty weak. So let's plug in our long wire antenna into the jack at the side. So here's my antenna. Let's plug it in. So you can definitely see the difference there in reception. The long wire antenna, which at the moment is just 12 meters, I recommend anything between 12 and perhaps 40 meters, whatever you can establish, and as high as possible in your outside. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye, happy listening.